Alrighty, good morning. Welcome back to the garage. It is uh, 6.50 in the morning, a little bit of a late start. It's 93 degrees outside already. We got the fans running, so again, the audio is going to be what it is. Today we're going to do uh, the newest iteration build on the plank. I want to show you some of the changes that I've been making. I'm interested in increasing access to spaces to put a Fade FPV PWM ELRS receivers. The, uh, they're great. I love them for quickly building and testing stuff as I'm doing right now um, as I'm making changes. I mean, again, I'll really get into my FPV flying season uh, once the summer's over. It, it's putting goggles on when it's 105 degrees outside and you're dripping sweat already uh, and sitting like that for 30 plus minutes just isn't my cup of tea. So um, right now I, I build a lot of stuff and test things uh, line of sight. Um, you know, because I can go out and hit the park and be out there for 10 minutes, get the data that I want, uh, the test that I'm running, and go from there. So again, I'm using uh, these, that's the, uh, it's the Beta FPV ELRS PWM receiver. Um, the challenge you have with this is mounting the servos. Um, you require headroom that, well, let's test it out. All right, that's an ESC, but it's the same DuPont connection. Um, when you plug that guy in, you're talking an all-up headroom. It, that's 22 and a half millimeters, but you're talking 25 millimeters uh, at a minimum because you want to have a, a safe bend radius for your wire. Don't be one of those guys that cram stuff in. Guys, everything in these airplanes jiggles and vibrates when you fly. If you have stuff touching other things and they're jiggling and vibrating for hours on end, um, it's a recipe for a short. So that's why I do stuff like this to try and secure my wire and stop the vibration. Um, it's something you gotta fight. Also, uh, something you may wanna consider when it comes to um, reducing vibration. This you know, applies when folks are going out and flying FPV. Um, Two-bladed props are amazing for efficiency, but anyone that's flown an old, you know, I don't know, any of the old Cessnas, Pipers, Beaches, or whatever with, with two-bladed and then have the opportunity to move up to, to three-bladed or you get into you know, other stuff with four, five, six, or more blades, um, there is a definite increase in smoothness. Um, Two-bladed propellers have a vibration that they, they bring with them, um, and that's gonna show up in your camera. Um, so that's, you know, a lot of what we do in these builds is try and optimize for getting the camera A with the placement we want, you know, so it doesn't have any airframe in view necessarily. And then B, um, a lot of it has to do with mitigating the vibration so you can avoid that jello. Uh, I'm using the DJI camera system. I'd love to get in and try the wax nail system. Um, I just like to have alternatives. I haven't had an opportunity to uh, to fly one, try one, stick it on my face or do anything with it yet, but maybe that'll present itself at some point in the future. But um, yeah, I you know, all of these things you work to mitigate the vibration and uh, something to consider. I'm out and testing because I have about a thousand two-bladed props that are cheap, cheap, cheap. Um, and for something that I'm going to build, fly it three times, make changes, and then rebuild, you know, it's completely suitable for my needs to just use a, a cheap two-bladed prop. But if I'm worried about getting the shot and I wanted to make it, uh, make sure it looks as good as it possibly can, yeah, I've got uh, two, three, well, that's a uh, two, four, six, those are six-bladed props on that. I'll show you this just for fun. Um, That's, uh, <laughs> I built that for fun. It's got a, a bit of a noise to it. Those are externally mounted ESCs from back in the day. Uh, yeah, they, uh, you know, they had vents cut, so air flowed through there. Um, you know, six bladed props and whatnot. Uh, this thing sounded about as close to a Metro liner as you can get. And I used to fly Metros and I'm not sure if that's a compliment or an insult, but we'll get back to you on that. I just like the looks of this thing. Um, uh, the airframe itself, I call it the drag queen. Um, let me put it back. Hang on. The Drag Queen was the uh, the first successful FPV airplane that I made, you know, following my design criteria. Um, but dude, I absolutely dug it. I mean, it's a, uh, you know, a half of a Cessna 337. It's a, uh, I don't know, part of a you know, guys say the you know, Sky Hunter. I mean, OV10. There's a million different derivatives of a similar style airframe. But this was a uh, it, was, it was a pretty neat, easy. Well, it actually wasn't an easy to build system. This nose has more parts than it should. Um, 
but you know you had your FPV camera system sitting up there and it came through there was a little bit of ventilation down here your battery you know at the time I was flying um, lipos um, and uh, you know the battery sat beneath it um, motor was obviously a pusher here this thing is loud it's silly loud it's got that that prop bashing pusher noise but it's got it on crack um, it was it, you know we'll build some of these things um, they're fun to fly the earlier versions were your original KFM before I was doing a fold over wing I like the fold over wing because a it gives you a nice leading edge and B it provides rigidity and strength in the fold the, you know compressing the foam in that area and everything else it adds a little bit of strength if you get a nice clean and even fold um, and you know <clears throat> the popsicle spars uh, that was something I got into experimenting with this I had a couple of different designs on that um, they do help uh, there are some you know areas of stress um, because I used to use this as you know it, it is a real yank and bank airplane. It was get out and try and fly it under, you know, trees and whatever. And, and we would do kind of air combat stuff. And, and I, I don't know, it was, it was just loads of fun to sit at the park with your buddies and try and knock streamers out or, or just go, you know, tear up amongst the pine. So anyway, um, enough said, we'll get back into uh, what we're doing today, uh, which is um, I'm working on a uh, design evolution. I want to show you some of the changes I made to this, uh, be a little bit more in detail, more of this going upstairs. So I'm going to quick build this airframe here as soon as it's off the laser. I'm um, not sure if we're going to put electronics in it. Uh, we'll just make a decision based on where we end up with the airframe and see where we want to go. I appreciate your time. I'll be back in a second as soon as we got the parts. All right, that was a little bit interesting. As you can see by this wing, if I push one end down, you can't see that. Let's move you. Okay. As you can see by this wing, if I push one end down, the other end sticks up. The reason being is we have slightly bowed uh, foam board. This happens, you get it from time to time, uh, but for those of you that think that, you know, manufacturing stuff like this is something that's straightforward and simple, or, or you know, you go out and you, you draw one of these things up, there's a learning curve to absolutely everything. Um, part of the learning curve in this is uh, knowing what's gonna happen when you have something like that. What happened here is the, uh, the the wing popped out of the uh, foam board after the last bit was cut. The laser head then moved the wing, and so you got a couple of erroneous cuts like you see that, like you see over here, um, and essentially that becomes, uh, you know, I mean, it's, it, it, it's not, it doesn't really matter. I stopped it as quick as I could. Um, I'm still going to build this airframe because uh, I don't throw anything out, and I'm using a piece of scrap foam board right now to cut the remaining parts that uh, were unsuccessful in uh, the completion of the job. They had not yet been cut by the laser, but since the laser lost its um, its home point, it was time to uh, restart the job. I apologize that it wasn't something I caught on camera, but at the same time, you know, I gave you a pause. I was going to get my parts. I was having my coffee and, uh, and this happened. But either way, we're going to use these parts and we're going to put it together because there's some design changes I want to test out and see how the electronics fit. Um, and if that's the case and it works, then hey, great, we'll go ahead and have another airframe to build up or we could even end up installing the electronics here. The, uh, the laser's done, uh, cutting the remaining materials out of the scrap. Tell you what, let's go get it. So you can see the fuselage piece is uh, further aft on a sheet than it normally would. Uh, this sheet had been used to, uh, let's move the laser head, get it off the screen, uh, cut some other, I don't know what those are used for. So anyway, laser shut down. Let me reduce my electrical load, kill the fume extractor and the air assist. Fume extractor draws the smoke out of the, um, out of the laser. Um, it lives behind that wood panel down there takes the smoke, blows it outside. The uh, air assist is what pressurizes between the final focusing lens of the laser, which exists right about here. And that's the air assist line coming in. The air assist pressurizes the nozzle so products of combustion don't go back up into the nozzle and cloud that lens, because if they deposit on the lens, you're gonna have yourself, uh, you're gonna kill the lens. Um, the lens will heat and you're done. So anyway, uh, let's pull these parts and build an airplane. All right, um, not worried about the camera hatch, not worried about the uh, tail aft closeout. 
We'll start on the wing here. Usual line of, uh, you want to see the work. So, we're going to need another glue stick here in a hot second. Again, those one, two, three blocks, man, they are handy. And they're a tool that you use in the shop now and forever. Let me grab a glue stick. All right, we'll put a uh, structural member into the uh, into the tail. That'll sit just like that. These guys are good. Um, let's try putting one into one of these. I had to redesign the, uh, I made some errors in math, basically, uh, in terms of how the popsicle spar would lay in between two, these two stabilizers, because the stabilizers sit on a tapering tail. So I did some new geometry, and we'll see how this works. Um, I'll show you what I mean when I can compare the airframes and the builds. Um, That'll hold like that, that's fine. Do our nose section. I'm coming to the usable end of this glue stick. I'll need... You could tell because when I was squeezing the trigger, uh, you could feel it no longer had grip, so. All right, that looks about right, same thing. Tap that down. Okay, those guys are... Uh, Gonna be good. Pull this for now. I'm gonna want these for later, actually. Is this the old 180? Uh, you've seen me do it in other videos, perhaps, where I don't put a couple of these, you know, popsicle sticks in here. Um, if I'm thinking clearly, I typically tend to enjoy it because as you fold this piece over, it gives you good reference. Um, making sure, oh, there's the ruler. Put that there for now. Got a little hot glue, add my glue stick. This is the fun part about putting these things together, you know. Um, yeah, I'm the guy that does all this stuff, but it's like, you know, when you're the guy building the airplane sitting here like this, you get to discover if your designer is an idiot or a genius. Um, I have done stuff that has been, oh, that's incredible, it's gonna be great, it's gonna work. <laughs> and I've done stuff that's absolutely asinine. Um, you know, gotten angles exactly wrong by 180 degrees, <clears throat> you know. The precision of the air was amazing and such that could only be accomplished using a computer. So, anyway, we'll get that uh, glued down, give that a hot minute. Come in and do the other side. Let me shut off the, uh, I'm gonna shut off the cooler, turn on the fan. I said cooler, it's really, uh, it's really a chiller, technically. It's a, it's a Freon water cooling system for the laser. It's that Cloud Ray 5200. It's been a decent unit. Uh, we had a, the non-refrigerated type before, and it just it couldn't keep up in Arizona. Um, so 
you know, as I've got limited current overhead, and yes, that is something I'd love to address, um, but limited current overhead, I, I stage how I bring on my electrical loads. Um, I'll start my cooler chill in before I begin my uh, lasing process. The reason being by bringing on the uh, air assist and the fume extractor, um, I have a tendency to blow that circuit in the summertime as just things get too warm. So let's see how this one wants to fold over. There we go. Oh, that'll be perfect. Put these here. Oops, these. That guy doesn't need to live there anymore. That'll work nicely. Just because I have access. And again, not that I expect that we're going to build this to completion. Um, you know, I expect this will just be a kind of a pathfinder to see if we like the fuselage integration with the changes that I made. Um, but at the same time, I sometimes you learn that, oh, you know, you accidentally knocked some other parameter unrelated to what you were doing entirely out of whack. Um, the repeatability of this process is, is brilliant. I mean, the fact that literally I can tell you these, you know, um, for this particular build, and don't hold me to it because if I change things, you know, obviously all this would change, but it's like these are going to be 90 millimeter um, length overall prior to bend control rods. Um, you know, to have that level of precision in your garage is just something that I really dig. So we'll let those guys chill for a bit. These most likely have cured to a level I can work with. There we go. Um, yeah, this was a grumpy cut. It didn't do its second pass, but that's all right. This is just a Pathfinder build. Still going to seal these in. So I'm running that bead, and that bead is sitting on top. Um, I also think that I'm going to remove not the index marks, but the uh, attach points for the Nerf hardware, just because I don't like how it cuts close to the spar. And that, that spar in this airplane um, has a reason for being there. So, hotel key card for nice even smear. Same line of glue running the opposite direction. And that gets really nice and flat. So, and from the upper surface, everything looks wonderful. So, I'll do the same thing here. You're just laminating these spars into place. And guys laugh and say, you know, you call them spars, those are popsicle sticks. And I'm like, this is foam board. <laughs> you know, I mean, everything's relative. All right, I gave it a nice lamination. I'm gonna put it just out of the way. Build a fuselage. Changes in this uh, design, you'll notice there's only two holes for the avionics rack. Um, their spacing is different versus the other one. Again, we'll get into this as we uh, have the two completed airframes side by side, which should be shortly here. Uh, avionics rack, here we are. See? Smaller. There was interface fit issues for the uh, ESC if it was an old style giant heat shrink ESC in the tail of the airplane that um, I wanted to avoid. I'll show you what I'm talking about once I get this together. So the, the goal with this version was to, hey, let's uh, give the ESC more room to run underneath. Squeeze these guys in.
and a little bit of hot glue and then we're going to tip it back so the tail's secure. One here, put one there, and uh, that'll hold the tail in the position that we want. All righty. Um, I mean, this is the problem with builds like this. Very quickly, you get down to the end. <laughs> um, for fun because we're here. I'll put the uh, camera mount. All of these parts again, even if I, you know, an hour from now decide that this is not going to be the anything, hit it with a bit of rubbing alcohol, everything comes off. Give these two, uh, this is where the, uh, the, basically the battery hatch, this forward closeout. I pinch these so they just fold in. See what I'm doing? Just pinch it just a little like that because then your vent, there's your vent, then your vent can slide on just like that. So it's just an alternate to a latch mechanism. You know, again, we need cooling airflow out here. So, uh, That'll work out pretty well for us. Let's see, this tail probably is good. You know, the thing I've noticed about having glasses is that I either have no glasses or I have four pairs of glasses. You know, so I don't know how that works, why I can't just keep an even distribution of things throughout my life, but this is the joys of getting old, my friends. All right, let's see how the, uh, you know, the horizontal stabs, how their interface works. Um, actually, we're going to send it. A little bit of glue. There we go. Spar goes through the aft pass-through. Well, I already like and think that that appears as if it is more at a 90 degree angle, so I'll put a little bit here. It looks perpendicular, not to this fuselage line, but to the, uh, what would be the relative wind, I guess, or the, the fuselage center cord. All right, so that's in. Now the question is, ah, it's in. That's that's about as close to those index marks as we're going to get for something where the laser had a cut error on it. So I'm happy with the tail close out like that. That popsicle stick will keep those uh, stabilizers nice and straight. Also, in the event you bang it or bump it against something, you're pulling it in and out of your car. That's why I threw that popsicle stick back there. Just it helps avoid them folding over. I'm not going to put servos in this, but I'm going to grab the wing. Here's the wing. Forward spar pass through. No, nothing in the servo tray. Aft spar pass through. All the way up to about three millimeters shy of the fuselage bend line. Same thing. Spar pass through, nothing in the servo. Spar pass through. The KFM cut. And we'll roll it. Flop it and drop it. This is something I, um, again, winter time, a couple of kids live down the street. When I go out to the flying field, 
the airplanes that I'd build up that, you know, weren't going to work out for whatever reason, I used to give them to all the kids. And uh, boy, oh boy, they sure loved it. So um, you'd see little boys running around or little girls run, <laughs> running around, you know, and, and they'd be playing all sorts of little combat games with them, uh, chasing each other. And I mean, it was just a hoot and, you know, doesn't cost me but a buck. And I'd rather give it to them because honestly, it's easier than throwing them out. Um, both the children and the airplanes. All right. Um, let's put our uh, nose close out here. I really like this folded over nose. Before I just used a, uh, a single piece and uh, I'm going to grab this nose though. Get everything lined up the way that I like it. There we are. And I'll hold this down. Um, for reference for both you and I, because I'm going to close this out, let's spin you around, drop it down. I think that is plenty of space. Here, we'll do this. For even the oldest of old school ESCs, and this was my thought, to pass underneath. You see? Now, in the bulk of my builds, yeah, that's backwards. I know it. So, there it is with the uh, ferret ring. I have a grab nabber that's perfect for this. Get under there, you bugger. There we are. Yeah, dude, that's 100%. So I am very happy with that. Um, that will provide the clearance that I need. Even if I'm using, and most likely I will be using, I typically use smaller ESCs without BECs. But again, just with these cheap and dirty builds, I use a lot of my older parts because if I can prove the center of gravity, um, you know, center of gravity on, on any airplane is critical. Um, your, your max takeoff weight, you can be flexible on. That's just a question of available power and runway. Um, so anyway, I'm happier with that design. Um, when I was carrying the, uh, when I was carrying this avionics rack further aft, even where it would extend over the popsicle stick through hole for the vertical stab, it would, uh, you couldn't get any wiring underneath there. And so all of a sudden you, you now have those high current DC wires commingled with your RF up here. We'll go the GPS and the, uh, the ELRS receiver. Matter of fact, let's do a test fit on that. I know you love staring at the tail while I talk. Um, same thing, grabbing my uh, ELRS PWM receiver. This is just a random DuPont connector from a dead servo just to see. I'll put it in a random location. And this should have enough room and it does to go there. Typically what's gonna live there is gonna be a flat uh, transmitter like, the, uh, like this guy, you know, which is the, uh, oh, you can't see it. There you go, now you can. Um, you know, ELRS, um, that's one of the, um, not, I forget what they call it. It's the duplex receiver where they can basically two in one. Um, but anyway, that'll fit in there. And, and, and why I like that is you end up with a heck of a lot more airflow. And when it comes down to your avionics and everything, cooler is better, especially, you know, with the temperatures we deal with out here. But even in the wintertime, you know, why do you want to heat stress anything? Um, you know, little airflow, never hurt anybody. So... Um, all right, I'm going to close out the tail based on this. We can pull this off the front. We'll take these off the sides. Take that off the side. That's kosher. We can bring this guy forward. Let's put him on just to see. I don't have a... Oh, let's throw a camera in here. Um, and this is even the new style. And I'll show you all this later. We'll get into it. Um,
So the pin just goes through. There we are. Pin. Hi. Now let's reset you. All right. There's the camera system. You can see the pin is this flat tab here that pushes through, coming out with these two little pin connections down there. That holds the uh, sliding camera me mechanism inside that top housing. Um, so this guy, show you how that closeout works. Again, the camera can slide, you know, if I can grab it. Camera can slide forward and aft. So there it is in a forward position. Put that in, slide it aft, and it's got that cutout that it uh, just sits inside. Um, so what does that do? It holds the nose, uh, the, the top hatch, it holds that secure, keeps it from moving side to side, and locks the camera so you, you minimize airframe vibration. The tail end of this, of course, is latched into place using this uh, sliding vent system. So, the stare down the throat, you can see, um, and the camera still has, you know, pitch adjustment if you want that. Anyway, um, I didn't have it seated all the way. There you go, seated. And it's, it's locked in with that airframe, and that forward hatch is not, you know, you can hold the airplane up from that. It's, it, it's not moving, it's not going anywhere. Okay, let's put the tail on. And then, make sure we're happy with that, but otherwise, I think this is gonna be a good build. Beads of hot glue coming down there. And uh, there's that guy. Same thing, beat a hot glue here. Run a little down the side. And slide this in. Oh, hang on. I've displaced sideways. There we are. Fix that. Okay. Um, that's the airframe. I mean, if I want to put a motor mount on, I'd have to go upstairs because I don't have any of them here. Okay, we will uh, we'll look at that and uh, we'll talk about things upstairs later on today. Here we go. All right, so we've been building this plank and I told you that uh, we'd go upstairs and take a look at it. I'll show you where uh, the design started off. Um, this was, I don't know, ages ago when I first made up my first plank. Um, this plank here is uh, a version built flying with the original DJI system. This is not the O3 system. This was the goggles. I don't know, the big, the big old fat goggles. Too many versions of them. Those guys, whatever they're called. Um, it was with the OG DGI system. As you can see, it's got the old style air unit and camera. Um, this was the old style nose. If you notice, there was a fold over piece of foam board that, uh, that folded down and took up too much area in my cut space. Um, the camera itself had a similar style mounting. However, the, uh, nose latch was an old school style swinging nose latch. The camera mount was horizontal, which is still an option. I've got both horizontal and vertical mounts. Um, 
And uh, yeah, this version is a uh, was, was a nice flying airplane. Um, the nose hold down system was a couple of popsicle sticks that were hot glued inside just like that. I was not using the camera. And if you look inside of the nose, you can see there was a 3D printed reinforcement piece um, as this was a single layer um, top cap, basically. I had a lot of failures um, when, uh, if you had a sudden and abrupt stop, um, the battery could knock this forward and this was a weak point and subject to failure. That's why I wanted to revisit that. I also don't like single purpose latches, um, so I ended up changing that system uh, to a dual purpose latch. On the back end, um, this had the, uh, the three connection point system for a long avionics tray, and it had a rather pronounced square tail, a couple of air vents on the side. Um, the Elevons, uh, as you can see, were rather small. This was uh, an airplane that had some pitch, pitch issues. Um, it needed to have the speed up. Also, there were no stabilizers at the back um, to provide additional pitch stability. So in certain speed regimes, this had a tendency to find air speeds in which it hunted um, in pitch. So one thing that is unique to this airplane that you don't see on uh, other subsequent ones, but I, I, I do still incorporate it in the airplane whenever I feel like I need it. It might be hard to see. That's a 3D printed skid plate. You can just see um, made molded to the base of the airplane. Uh, you can get a view there, a couple of alignment tabs, and uh, that skid plate is quite effective. Kept it nice. So again, non-swappable camera system. This is the OG camera mount that I uh, had developed. Um, they were glued and stuck um, into the airplane and were born in part to it. So that was the OG system. The um, first design evolution of what I would consider a more modern version is here. So, you know, we talked about this. This was, I brought in the, uh, the horizontal stabilizers at the back. We've still got a wide tail, if you notice. The motor has areas of, um, in which it is blanketed by airflow. You'll have patterns or pockets of recirculation back here trapped. So you'll have poor air circulation, perhaps around your motor. The um, horizontal stab, is in line with the um, avionics rack. Um, what else can I tell you about this? There was uh, the ventilation. I moved from the holes on the side to holes at the top up here on the uh, aft fuselage closeout. Um, you know, this was one of the early iterations where I incorporated a um, the vent system and it has a swappable DJI uh, camera system. Um, Ironically, this is a bit of a hybrid in that um, you can see battery tray is incorporated and whatnot. Um, I say it's a bit of a hybrid because this is a new style camera mount, the forward arm. Um, this forward arm is a lower profile and has a tooth. If you can see that small tooth sticking up in there. And what that tooth does, um, this slides into the uh, mount system like that, holds on to uh, the uh, antenna at the back. And the purpose of this system, as, as we well know, it slides aft and presses in and latches the nose down. That tooth, however, and this is actually, I was testing a much uh, later design. This is only drawn up in the past day or so. That tooth, engages in the now folded over nose closeout piece and really forces this camera mount arm down and to latch strongly onto this top plate. So um, in doing so, it, a lot more rigidity, a lot more stability to that camera as it's one and one with the airframe. Still playing around Nerf Dart uh, release mechanisms. Um, I had those. You can see the alignment parts for it. You can see the uh, servo access hole. Um, what, I, what I think I, I did at from this point going forward um, in my designs is I had two separate wings in all of my cut files. Um, so you could, when I get down to the laser, I can decide if I wanna have any of these cutouts here, here, and the four attach points at the bottom 
here and here. The reason being is, is they run really close to these spars and the positioning of these spars, um, you know, it, it's something that there's been a thousand reasons for where they've evolved where they are. The, you know, the bend radius of the paper, um, you know, the, the aft cut line of the KFM fold. Um, there's a lot of elements like that. The, the patterns of the stresses through the airplanes position the, you know, how far out from the center line they'll exist. So these are all design considerations that go into where you put those popsicle sticks. Um, what, you know, the, the Nerf dart system is a fun system. Um, I dig it, but you know, the purpose of this airplane really, uh, is to go out and, and cruise around and look at things. Um, you know, it's just for exploring, you know, terrain and, uh, I don't know, uh, different locations, wherever you're going. It, it, it's kind of fun. And, and you could potentially get in trouble if folks say, what are you doing with the drop mechanism on there? So that's where I've, I've tended to go away from. So again, um, this was, you know, maybe a, a generation and a half ago. There is no popsicle stick back here. These were very easy to break. This was, all of these so far are flyable airplanes. They have avionics, they're ready to go. Um, you know, the, they might just be, uh, that one, for example, is just a line of sight airplane. Um, next evolution that we went into here, it, it shows you, and again, this was the old style camera mount um, in that this arm had a much wider bite to it. Uh, it was designed for the earlier of my drop camera systems, sat five millimeters lower, and that's why that is not as snug. This used to be acceptable. Then I thought, why isn't it pinching and why don't we make this a, uh, a universal distance? And so anyway, rather than throw these out necessarily since I primarily use the, the mock-ups like this as analogs uh, when I'm testing, you know, I'll, I'll put my weights on there, um, you know, match the weight of uh, the DJI system and, uh, and then toss it and throw it. And that way I'm not risking a uh, DJI camera system, you know, and, until I'm ready to go out and fly it. I'm doing airframe tests. As you can see the notes on this, um, you know, I write all my notes on the airplane. Squawk in the camera gap. I reminded myself to replace, you know, to remove these, um, you know, the, uh, the Nerf dart holes. I said that uh, here was a, a leveling issue um, that turned out to be related to uh, an error in placement of the laser and cutting it. I wanted to eliminate this third pass through because as I was uh, working on, you'll notice this is a smaller, narrower tail. As I was tapering the tail, this is when I noticed that you no longer have clearance for pass through for the ESC. Remember I said I wanted to bring that ESC underneath the avionics rack so I can have a separation of high current and uh, RF control signal up on top. Uh, first iteration of the um, spar on the um, horizontal stabs. Um, so, and you know, a couple other just cuts uh, that were erroneous. Um, and that's what I do. I mark all of my airframes. You know, I just write the notes of what I want to fix um, when I want to take them and, uh, and recut them. So that was uh, probably now we're about a generation ago. Um, moving forward, we're into, uh, and actually, yeah, you'll notice this is the first time that I increased the size of the Elevons. Then I said to hell with it and built a flight test one. Um, this one I actually took out and did uh, a good bit of flying with. Um, you can see it's got the new style camera system. It has the actual, um, you know, simulated camera weight put in there. Um, you know, battery arrestor tray, you know, for movement on that. Um, you can see the you know, the grass marks there where it's been flowing. Um, same thing, you know, now it's got the reinforcement back here. It's got the narrow tail, the new motor mount. Um, it's, uh, it's, a, it's a cleaner build. Um, I was happy, yeah, this is where I was saying that I had the alignment off. You can see, you can see on this side, that alignment mark um, shows that I was incorrect in the way that I was uh, calculating how to position that, um, that tail popsicle stick. So I'll put this back on just so we keep them together. Um, so we were getting close though. I liked the way that that airplane flew. Um, and so all those design changes got into this. This is the airplane that I cut this morning. It's got the new style camera system. Um, ignore the fact that I had these uh, Nerf dart vents. That was an omission. I printed the, uh, the wrong wing on that. You know, we've corrected the alignment at the back. Um, it now has the only 
two mount uh, avionics rack that allows for the wire pass through the high DC current wire um, coming back, or I'm sorry, the, the three phase wires going back to the motor and the ESC for that to rest under the avionics tray. And uh, all in all, it's a much cleaner build. Um, the only other change that I've made in what is file version 17 on this, on the next one, I'm also making the pass through for the servo wire for the drop mechanism. I'm making that an optional um, cutout just so, you know, again, I don't, this is a, this is a, we come in peace. We're going out and just, you know, shooting cool footage and, and, and having a good time uh, just doing some exploring. Um, I just don't want anyone getting any misconception that this was an airplane that was equipped to do anything, you know, nefarious or, or whatnot, uh, despite the fact had they seen it with nerve darts, their kids would want one and it'd be loads of fun. Um, so that's it. That's, um, that's where I am with the uh, design evolution. I think that uh, in the days ahead, well, actually, I got some more trips coming, but, um, you know, my next project's in the shop. Uh, we'll be building this up. It flies well. Um, you know, this one flies really well uh, just as a line of sight ship. I already have that flight controller built up. The GPS, the new avionics tray, uh, as it's set in this morning's cut, um, all that's going to work. I have no other changes noted for it. So that being the case, the next one I'll build up will have the... Um, that flight controller installed, um, and we'll probably put a, a, a three, four bladed uh, prop on the back um, and install the DGI system. And then of course the problem is, is again, it's it's so stinking hot out here. I just don't have a whole lot of motivation to go and fly it. Um, you know, when it's 110 degrees outside, it's really tough to strap the goggles on and say, I'm gonna stand here for 30 minutes. So don't get me wrong, I do love flying these things. Um, I just, I've either got to be going to a place that's conducive to flying them, or I've got to be um, back here for the eight months out of the year when it's absolute paradise and it's amazing and, and we can have a great time. You know, um, I don't know what airplane I'm going to do next. Uh, I've got a lot of these. I really love these pushers. They're, they're straightforward. It's one motor. It's one flight control system. It's two servos, single sheet of foam board, and you've got a great airplane to go out and explore the environment. Um, you know, in my mind for bang for the buck, it just can't be beat. I mean, the twins are cool, but when I'm in a place that's new and I want to go see things, you know, uh, I don't need two motors. I mean, the reliability of these electric motors is, is such that you just don't find yourself having problems. Um, you know, in all the flying, when I've lost motors in, in these airplanes, it's because I've been doing stupid stuff. Namely, I've, I've usually overpropped or commanding too much power or running it too hot. Um, you know, it, it or hit something, um, or I mean, just it, the air has been, you know, on my end, not on the aircraft or on, on the motor end. Um, so bang for the buck, I find these things hard to hard to beat. But you know, I mean, next maybe we'll explore one of the other airplanes. Let me know what you'd like to see. Also, I know this is a real deep dive. I don't know if you guys want to be as nuanced and get involved in you know my day to day builds on these things. Um, I. I'm quite happy to sit down in the garage most every morning that I'm home. Uh, if, if the girls are off at school and off at work, uh, you know, I get a kick out of it. That's my happy place. And this is what I love to do. I'd love to share it with, you know, folks that are interested in it. But if, if, if you got a different direction in mind, you know, voiced out in the comments, uh, please let me know. You know, I will say I'm encouraged by likes and comments and the subscriptions and all that stuff. You know, it feeds the algorithm and gets uh, all the mumbo jumbo of YouTube, you know, gets the, the information out there and brings people in. Um, you know, one day I'd, I'd love to be able to go to towards a, a community and, and, you know, getting these in the hands of other people. Um, you know, I don't know, doing live builds or whatever, if that's something be interesting. But um, right now it's, it's, it, it's just exciting to see where it's going. Hey, I appreciate your time. Go out there, be nice, fly safe. We'll talk to you in the next one. Thanks.